Well, good morning. It's great to see you all again here in the beautiful Australian countryside. And you know, it's a little bit more gloomy today than usual here. I don't know if you can see in the background, but there's a bit of a thunderstorm coming over there. And I'm out here today to shoot some video. Uh, I was expecting a pretty warm, sunny day. It's, about, it's supposed to be about 28 degrees Celsius, but uh, I've arrived here at this location. And by the way, this is the amazing Muckleford Railway Station here in central Victoria. And I've shot here a few times before in the past, and I'll probably show you a couple of those pictures later on. But the reason we're here today is that I want to go through a video which sort of extends on some of my other videos that I've produced in the past talking about pre-planning our photography but specifically today I want to talk about pre-planning for future photo shoots so I'll explain more as we go through okay there's a bit of thunder a bit of lightning around here you'll probably hear it soon but anyway you're probably wondering well what type of future events am I talking about here to pre-plan well even simple things like where the Milky Way rises in the east for example whoa or where the Milky Way sets over there in the west here where I am we might be looking at things like auroras uh, meteor showers now that's a big one um, perhaps uh, lunar eclipse now we have a lot of lunar eclipses as the years roll on um, and even where I can compose some circumpolar star trails now here in the southern hemisphere that's towards the south of course it, for you guys in the northern hemisphere you're facing towards the north so these are the types of things I'm talking about so let's have a bit of a look around I'll take you to a few locations and we'll see what we can find Oh wow, I just had that massive big thunderstorm just pass by. I had to take a fair bit of shelter in the car, but you can see behind me, heading off down there towards the west, uh, that's the thunderstorm. So I get a little bit scared around thunder and lightning, so I took refuge. But anyway, I want to continue this video talking about a subject that I have mentioned many, many times on this channel, and those of you who are regulars will have heard it, I'm sure. And that is, I'm talking about taking mental notes as I travel around to various locations. Now, as you know, in the car, I enter coordinates into my GPS when I find a location that I think I might want to come back to. And that makes it so much easier for me to actually find that location in the dark. And so how does that relate to our topic today? Well, of course it relates, because if I know that I want to find a location such as this, where I want to get a shot of the Milky Way core coming up in that eastern sky. Now, you might remember a couple of videos ago, I talked about planning for a nightscape shoot. And I talked about at my lo uh, location and latitude here in Australia, the Milky Way rises in that eastern sky at about 110 to 120 degrees on the compass bearing. You know, forget about everything else. All I need to know, that is if I set my compass to 120 degrees, that's where the Milky Way core is going to come up every single day of the year here in my location. Now for you in your location, that might be somewhat different, but I went through that video and I've got a link to it here, um, how I use the, the program Stellarium to give me those compass bearings. Now, one other little thing, on my GPS in the car, it has a little compass. Now, as I'm driving around, that compass changes direction. And I find myself constantly looking at that little compass. When I see something on the side of the road, as I drive past, perhaps I see a tree over there in a paddock, I'll look at my little compass and say, which direction am I facing here? And I take a mental note, and I take a lot of mental notes. See, a lot of you might think I'm mental. Well, I probably am but I take mental notes all of the time. And I've, if I think that location is significant enough, then I enter it into my GPS in the car. And from there, I can take extra notes if I think, uh, talking about you know details of the location, etc. I write a lot of stuff down because I think to get this right, we have to take notes and we have to make sure we can remember the details of what we've just seen in the paddock or wherever it may be around the place. Wow, what gorgeous stuff this is. You'd have to be wrapped to have subject matter like this 
to be able to shoot on a regular basis. And I guess I'm very blessed because I do have a lot of locations around here which is out in the country, there's no lights, and it's as dark as anything out here. I've got good dark skies and access to, you know, a fair few different directions of view here. But you know, some of the things I'm talking about, um, just to give you an example of a popular meteor shower, the constellation of Gemini is the point in the sky where the famous Geminids meteor shower happens every year around about the middle of December. This constellation is given its name because of the two main stars named Castor and Pollux. Gemini is Latin for twins. Now, here in Australia where I live, Gemini rises in the northeast at about 11.30 p.m. on December the 14th and has made its way to the northwestern sky at about 5 a.m. when the morning twilight appears from the east. The constellation never gets higher than about 20 degrees above the horizon here in the southern hemisphere where I live. And I think this is a better meteor shower for viewers in the northern hemisphere where it's a lot higher in the sky. But one advantage we do have here in the south is that it's easier to frame a foreground landscape as part of the shot due to it being a little bit lower in the sky. Now I've never really had a whole lot of success with meteor showers to be honest with you. Maybe I just need to try a little bit harder. Anyway, let's move on. Now just out of interest, um, this is an old railway station which used to be used as a passenger train terminal. Now strangely enough, it still is used as a passenger train terminal. There's an old steam train that travels along this railway track all the way from the town of Molden to the town of Castlemaine which is down that way. And it's become a fantastic tourist attraction and one that uh, people line this very platform many, many times just to see this beautiful old train going past. Now just to give you some idea of what I'm talking about, I've got my phone here with the PhotoPills app and I'm going to check out and see where the Milky Way core comes up here over the front of this old engine. So let's have a look. Uh, there you go. Now as you can see, the Milky Way core comes right over the top of the engine. Now this is facing in the southeast. Now, that's at about 4 a.m. at this time of year, but that will change depending on what time of year we come here. So, yep, that looks fantastic. So this is the augmented reality view of photo pills, which is really, really handy for planning in the daytime like it is now, what you can see over the top of a foreground subject like this old train. Okay, to prove my point again, I've come around to the other side of the same train here and I'm going to use my PhotoPills app to have a look in the western sky. So, here we go. Now, you can see how the Milky Way core comes down directly over the top of this old train. And so, later on in the year, that's exactly what I'm going to get. I'm going to get that view over the top of the train and possibly the station over there. So that's pretty good. All I need to do is compose that shot the way that I want it to be. And as long as I don't move the train here, I'll be set. Now I mentioned earlier that the Milky Way core rises in the east at about 110, 120 degree uh, compass bearing. And later on in the, either that night or in the Milky Way season in the year, the Milky Way core sits down in the west here in Australia at about a 240, 250 degree latitude. So it, halfway between that, of course, it's directly overhead. So all of these things come into our uh, minds when we're planning our Milky Way shoots. The thing that we're often looking for when we're planning our Milky Way shoots is a 360 degree view. Now that's harder to achieve than it may seem at first. So for example, here at this location, I've got a really clear view off there to the east albeit with some power lines which are blocking somewhat of the view, which is annoying because you've got to uh, clone them out if you don't want them in your shot. I do have a view over towards the southwest or the western sky, 
but it's not uninterrupted. There's a few, few trees around over there. Sometimes we can't be too picky with these things. But one of the things I do look for are uh, subject matter that you can get a 360 degree view around. And I'll keep those in mind because there's many times when something's happening, perhaps there's an aurora happening or something like that. And I'm thinking, well, up here in the south, I need a southerly view. Now, if there's a heap of trees there, that's no good. But sometimes I can come to a location such as this where I know, well, I've got pretty good views all around and I can shoot whatever I want. And that's an advantage because I've got a dark sky, uh, no light pollution, and I know that if I want to shoot something, I've got a pretty good option to come here. But I've got a couple of other places I want to show you, so let's get onto those now. Now on my travels, I've just stumbled across this beautiful old stone brick building on the side of the road. So I've just stopped to have a look at it. It's right on the road. Now it's private property in there, not allowed inside, but I just wanted to work out my angles. Now it's not ideal for the Milky Way because it's facing, well, that's north. So the Milky Way here in the Southern Hemisphere comes right across over and sets in the west, but it could work for something like uh, a north facing meteor shower. So the Geminids, I was talking to you about that earlier. So that uh, would probably work as a foreground subject if I was happy to sit here for a long time trying to get some meteors to, to come up. Who knows? But you know, this is the sort of stuff you see these beautiful old buildings all around the countryside. Anyway, I've got another great location to show you guys. So let's get to that one. Well, I've already been out for about an hour this morning. It's only about nine o'clock in the morning. Had to grab my coffee. Um, I'm on my way to the next location. And it's a beauty. I've been there heaps of times before, but it will help me explain my uh, reasoning for some of the things I'm talking about today. In the meantime, I have got my favorite snack. Absolutely love these. This is a rum ball. Don't you just love the look of that? Mmm, fantastic. Now, as you already know, I've talked about this a lot and I've already mentioned it this morning, but there's a number of apps that I like to use when I'm out canvassing my areas to scout for Milky Way shooting. And uh, of course, one of those is Photo Pills. I've already showed you that and that's a no-brainer. It's a fantastic, that virtual reality to use whilst you're out in the field in the daytime is invaluable. It's really, really good. Um, the other one that I love, and I've mentioned to you in previous videos, is Stellarium. And I use that predominantly to plan whilst I'm still at home. So at my desk at home, I'll uh, put Stellarium up on the computer screen and I'll go through the various settings and the various um, angles, work out my compass bearings, which is vital um, for me to work out my compositions. And the other thing is, just a simple compass. Now, once again, I know that I'm repeating myself here, but I wanna make it very clear to you guys that a compass, a simple compass is enough for you to find out where the Milky Way is going to be in the night sky. Now, let me put it to you like this. The Milky Way core is predictable. Every year, at every day and every month, it's pretty much exactly in the same place at the same time. So if I'm um, here now in 2020 in February um, and I'm looking for the Milky Way core, I know that I've got to be out there at about three o'clock in the morning. Now, if I go 10 years into the future and I'm looking for the Milky Way core in February here in this same location, I know it's still gonna be there at about three o'clock in the morning in exactly the same place. These things are predictable, therefore they're repeatable. And that means I can lock that into my brain and I can know without having to go through any other apps, that's where it's going to be. And people say to me all the time, well, how do you work out where that's gonna be? Oh, and they think you need an app. And the apps are great and they are really good, helpful aids, but you don't. It's always in the same place. And I know once I've scouted a location, I've found say an old building like the one I showed you previously, that if that lines up, 
now this year, it's gonna line up next year, it's gonna line up the year after that and the year after that. And I just have to go back at the appropriate time. Well, here we are at the Taradale Railway Bridge. And true to form, just as I arrive here, the local farmer has come to do some mowing in the paddock over here. So he's slashing all the grass down there. So that's the noise that you can hear in the background. But the reason I'm here is just to show you again the multiple compositions that are available with this beautiful old bridge in the background. This bridge is massive. So you've got the opportunity to get around it on pretty much every side. Now, obviously, because it's a north to south facing bridge, the best uh, vantage points are on the eastern side or the western side. Now, I've shot this from both sides and it works out really well because on the other side of the bridge there, you can see that the Milky Way core is gonna come up in the eastern sky and so you can get the core coming up over the top of the bridge quite nicely. Now, later in the year when the Milky Way core is going down over there in the west, I come around this side of the bridge and I can shoot it over the cross the top, the top of the bridge that way. Now there's a few other compositions here as well. I remember coming here one night from the other side of here back to my home in Bendigo and I came here just on the off chance that maybe there'd be a composition and sure enough there was and the train is just going across the bridge now as you can see and when that happened the headlight from the train was really really bright and therefore it lit this whole landscape i didn't have to do any lighting at all and sometimes you get some awesome shots just by that ambient light from traffic passing by in this case a train those headlights on those trains are absolutely awesome now i have to say it's one of my great delights to be able to tour around the countryside and just marvel at these absolutely amazing structures. So you can see this is huge. It is a big bridge. It's been here for decades. And yet every day there's, there's multiple trains going up and down this railway track. And they make awesome nightscape images. Now hopefully you can see from around this side, now I'm now facing east, that there's also a pretty good composition of the bridge. And I've shot this a few times from this very spot just here with a pretty wide angle lens with the intention of getting as much of the bridge in as possible. Now, this is a very wide bridge, so you do need a pretty wide angle lens to get it in one shot. But one night I remember being here and it was a cold, misty, foggy night. And I could remember seeing the Milky Way core coming up straight down there behind the bridge. And I had my camera set up right here, just parked on the side of the road, just right here. And then I was there for probably maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And then I noticed the fog just rolling in underneath the bridge through the road. And I thought this could be a great shot. And what happened then was a car came down the road from the other way and backlit all of that fog. And the resulting image I am absolutely wrapped in. So on another occasion, I can remember positioning myself right over there on that hill. It's a little bit hard to access because there's a creek over here, but what I was looking for on that particular night was star trails. So I needed to be facing roughly in a south direction. So I probably pointed the camera in, in a southeast direction because I like to sometimes uh, put the circle of the star trails off to one side a little bit. Now on that night, a similar thing happened. I was up on the hill there, uh, composed my shot and I heard a train come. So a train came right through one of the shots. Remember this is a star trail so I was shooting multiple exposures and the headlight from that train lit the whole of this landscape up. I didn't have to do any lighting at all. There was no moon, nothing else. Just the headlight from the train and the star trails and you can see a little bit of red glow from the signal uh, lights which are just up there but I love that one as well. So speaking of signal lights, another time I was here, you can see I've been here quite a few times, I remember setting up my camera to focus on that archway, that tower up there on the railway line, because it was shining quite bright red and green lights. 
and so I put my 50 millimeter lens on because I wanted to magnify the Milky Way which was behind it in the western sky over there so I got myself on the other side of the bridge focused in on the core now that uh, gantry up there was well and truly far enough away from the camera to still be in at infinity focus so I didn't have an issue with focusing just a single shot and those railway lights it was a cold misty night again and a bit of fog in the air and that's another shot I really like and so hopefully you can get my drift here that what I'm trying to say is this one location has multiple compositions and why is that because I can get around it on different angles so that's the point of what I'm talking about today now if something was happening in the sky whether that's a Milky Way, whether it's uh, an Aurora, whether it's star trials, whatever. I know that if I come here, I can get about three or four different compositions and most likely include the event that's happening. So this is always in the back of my mind and I'll come back here as often as I possibly can. Okay, now it looks like I've got a bit of a railway theme going with this video so far and to be honest I didn't really intend for that to be the case but I don't mind that because I love these railway tracks but the next location I want to take you to is probably out of all of these my all-time favorite you'll recognize it possibly from previous videos but I want to show you this spot because it has similar characteristics to some of the other ones although with a few limitations so let's go and have a look at that one now 